Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But first, a brief message from the Economic Development Administration's I-6 Challenge. Got some ideas on bringing innovations or new inventions to market faster? Well, join the $12 million I-6 Challenge at eda.gov I-6. They told me to say that all of you are going to be winners, but to me, the real winners are the teams awarded a million dollars each. This week, April 30th to May 6th, or XYZ. Hi. X Y Z. That is incorrect. On Friday, April 30th, President Obama stepped out to the White House Rose Garden to talk about the third straight quarter of GDP growth. But first, he took time to inform the American people about efforts to contain the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. There are now five staging areas to protect sensitive shorelines. Approximately 1,900 federal response personnel are in the area, and more than 300 response vessels and aircraft on the scene 24-7. On Saturday, May 1st, the president traveled to Ann Arbor to deliver the commencement address at the University of Michigan. Well, we're thrilled to be here, mainly because I've got, I think I have more Michigan folks on you my do. staff. You do, you do, and they from, were my secret From the most weapon. junior to the most senior. <laughs> Every, and they're all here. They all yes. came. The president focused his remarks on the nature of democracy in America's past, present, and future. You know, when our government is spoken of as some menacing, threatening foreign entity, it ignores the fact that in our democracy, government is us. We, the people, hold in our hands the power to choose our leaders and change our laws and shape our own destiny. Even as preparations were being made for the president's visit to the Gulf Coast, he made time to go to the White House Correspondents' Dinner, a Washington tradition where the president mingles with members of the press corps. And so I wasn't sure that I should actually come tonight. Biden talked me into it. He leaned over and he said, Mr. President, this is no ordinary dinner. This is a big On Sunday, May 2nd, President Obama traveled to the Gulf Coast to survey the efforts being made to contain and control the oil spill from a BP offshore oil rig. He was met at the airport by Governor Bobby Jindal before heading off to their first stop at the Coast Guard Command Center in Venice, Louisiana. So the booms are here? Right, Stay there. Real, real close. 5,500, yes, sir. Pretty close to shore. The President also spoke with local fishermen to hear their concerns on the impact this tragic accident will have on their livelihood. The federal government has launched and coordinated an all-hands-on-deck relentless response to this crisis from day one. On Monday, May 3rd, President Obama continued to monitor the situation and help coordinate the response, leading a call from his intergovernmental team and Coast Guard Commandant Thad Allen with local officials in the affected area. We want your intense involvement uh, throughout the response. You need to let us know if you're not getting what you need, when you need it. It's not going to succeed without your leadership and cooperation. Meanwhile, in the National Building Museum, the First Lady joined Energy Secretary Stephen Chu for the final round of the National Science Bill. Incorrect. It's the net aqueous solution. And he may just have an alternative career as a game show host when he's done with this. He's really good at it. And back at the White House, the President greeted Commander-in-Chief trophy winners, the Navy midshipmen, renowned for their football prowess with a little constitutional humor. I do have to warn you, I consulted with the White House Counsel, and according to the 22nd Amendment, you're only allowed to come back here one more time <laughs> before, <laughs> before it's somebody else's turn. On a beautiful Tuesday morning, May 4th, the President went to Foggy Bottom to make the case for Wall Street reform to the Business Council. But he started by talking to the American people about the ongoing investigation into the attempted car bombing in Times Square. The American people can be assured that the FBI and their partners in this process have all the tools and experience they need to learn everything we can. And that includes what, if any, connection uh, this individual has to terrorist groups. And it includes collecting critical intelligence as we work to disrupt any future attacks. On Wednesday, the 5th of May, the President was joined by the First Lady, Dr. Biden, and General Eric Shinseki at the signing of the Caregivers and Veteran Act legislation that increases mental health counseling and services available to veterans returning from Afghanistan and Iraq. We're forever mindful that our obligations to our troops don't end on the battlefield. Just as we have a responsibility to train and equip them when we send them into harm's way, we have a responsibility to take care of them when they come home. 
Later, White House photographer Pete Souza noticed a ruckus in the Rose Garden, where the President and First Lady were hosting a Cinco de Mayo celebration. The President reviewed the history of this festification, perhaps less well known than he implies. The events of this date in history are well known. How nearly 150 years ago, at the Battle of Puebla, a band of Mexican patriots faced off against a massive European army and won a victory that inspires the world to this day. On Thursday, May 6th, the President convened a meeting in the Situation Room, hearing from his national security team about the situation on the ground in Afghanistan and Pakistan. He holds these meetings regularly to keep close tabs on the situation. To find out more information about any of these topics, or to see complete videos of these events, go to whitehouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing Week. And so may I say, uh, go blue. I thought I'd go for the cheap applause line to start things off.